Hey guys, my name is Steph. I bought this cool today. I'm here with the ace attorney expert herself. Katie. It's Katie. Guy. Oh, oh, it's cute. Sorry, I just saw something in the background. That was cute. I was like, I was like, oh, look at the background of my computer. It's a cute thing. <laughs> oh, thank you for being AFK time, whatever. I hope you're doing well. Let me give you a quick shout out, friend though. Um I forgot what I was gonna say. I had McDonald's today. <laughs> I guess that's all I have to say right now. Yum. The, the, the McDonald's app is pretty mm. dope. It'll be like, hey, you want a Big Mac? Get a second Big Mac for 29 cents. It's like, ooh, I don't care about soda or fries, but two Big Macs for really cheap? All right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and once in a while, you gotta spoil yourself with a Big Mac or two. Ugh. <sighs> Oh, right. We're with these two again. I forgot. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're just starting the testimony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, we had, we had uh, uh, it's, it's Raleigh and, hold on. Raleigh and Pat. Pat. Like, patrol. There we go. I was like, I was like, is it Roly Poly the joke? I'm like, why would Roly Poly be the joke? No, it's oh. patrol. Yeah, it's patrol. It's, it's patrol. It's going fantastic, Iro. How are you doing, friend? This case has nothing to do with... Nope, wrong voice. This case has nothing to do with Mr. Gerda and Miss Gerda. Believe me, a London Bobby is good for his word. You see, sir, the windows on the top floor of the Gerda house are top hinged casements. Obviously, if anything had been thrown at the window, we would have seen it. I did leave the scene to go and fetch help, but my trusty Rolly was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for one moment, sir! Nothing strange to report on the front, sir! I'm waiting for, like, a moment, the testimony to be- the, the, the testimony is just, Oh, oh, Pat! And you'll be like, <laughs> oh, Rolly! And that's the- that's all the <laughs> testimony we get from, we have to, like, object, and find evidence against that, and it's like, you're not actually Pat and Rolly, you are Scooby and Do. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Scooby and Do. I, I, I saw a lot of Scooby Doo stuff on social the media two today. Two separate dogs, Scooby <laughs> and Do. Listen, if I remember correctly, there's Scrappy Scooby, and then there's like an old Scooby Doo. I don't remember his name, like Grandpa Scooby Doo. There's, there's at least three dudes. I do's. have no idea what the third do you're talking about is. There's like an episode of Scooby Doo where they they meet Grandpa Do. Or am I just insane? It might have been a one off of like mystery of like the newer ones or something. Hey, Katie, I'm... can you do me a favor? Can you look up and see if there's a Grandpa Scooby Doo real quick? <laughs> Grandpa, be <laughs> good looking. Get back in the Twitch grind. Getting masked on, locked my life. Yeah, Grandpa okay. Scooper Scooby Doo. The second <laughs> is Scooby Doo's grandfather. Already Google a Time Lord Iro coming. Why in is he a ghost? Wait, what? <laughs> is he a ghost? <gasps> Grandpa Scooper Scooby Doo the second. So, wait, so there was a first. Is Scooby Doo the third? He's a ghosty McGhost face. Beautiful, Iro. Beautiful. I love it. So, so Scooper, Scooby Doo, the third is our Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, the set. Well, no, he would be the Scooby Doo, the fourth, wouldn't he? Um, I mean, it depends on whether his dad was also named Scooby Doo. Was his you dad. You can skip generations <laughs> and still be the third. I mean, that's fair, but like, I'm so curious now. We have to get the Scooby Doo lore, guys. All right, suspend the murder trial. Right, guilty, yeah, right. not guilty. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. Judge will be right back. All right. <laughs> this is, I, there was a time where we were legitimately we just watched Scooby Doo movies for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Wait, I get back on that shit, dude. Uh, Zombie Island, so good though. <laughs> it is so good. What's the? I, I personally like Cyber Chase is great, but I also really love the Alien one where for, somehow Scooby Doo and Shaggy fall in love with aliens. And they fall in love with Scooby and Shaggy? Man. <laughs> I do know that one, but I think my favorite three have to be, and I'm not ranking them, they're okay. just my favorite three, is Zombie Island, Cyber Chase, and uh, the... Oh, wait, no, shoot. 
one of these has to go because the ghoul school is actually pretty good. Oh. But, um, and then I was also going to say the one with the hex sisters. <laughs> So the hex girls and I'm, yeah the hex girls and i'm gonna put them. a spell on you gonna put a spell on you because of that scooby doing the alien invaders yeah i mean listen i got a big love of alien stuff iroh iroh gets it iroh's just like yeah i love the alien one it's so good iroh you get it you get it <laughs> i remember that one being pretty good but i'm not as into aliens For as sure. i don't know the ghoul school was pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. I completely agree. Completely agree. I love the ghoul. All right. Back on to the not ghoul school, but some of them look like ghouls. Vampire school. <laughs> oh, this is special. I'm playing special for this. Oh, Iro, get ready for this amazing voice. <laughs> the detail is not in the police report, constable. Ooh -woo. <laughs> God, the worst part I see the figures together, I'm always like, ooh -woo. Uh, yes, uh, sorry about that. I must have been a little drowsy, huh? You cannot excuse your sins of drowsiness every time, Constable. No, sir! Uh, sorry, but... What exactly is a top-hinged casement window? And you... You cannot excuse your ignorance of such trite remarks, my learned friend. Of course, sorry. I found it, Mr. Narahodo. She is... I swear to God, who's that character from, um... Who's the character from the Magic School Bus doesn't suck with that answers everything? It's not Arnold, is it? No, no, no. Arnold's the kid who whines about going on and stuff. It's, uh... Is it Dorothy? Dorothy D or something? I have no clue. It's been... I don't want to think about how long it's been since I watched the magic school bus. <laughs> I think I'm going to an existential crisis. I think I'm spiraling. I think I'm going into an existential crisis. Why have you done this to me? I don't want to think about the number that the number of years is. Well, uh... Look, so we definitely watched it yesterday. I'm pretty sure there's a character who on there and like had an encyclopedia. She'd be like, uh, Dorothy's just, yeah, thank you, it's Dorothy, I knew it. So like Dorothy's always like, according to my encyclopedia, yada yada yada. Susato has this encyclopedia of magic that goes from like her law book talks about here's what the law is in the UK. Hey, fun fact, here's what a <laughs> A top cassette window is as well for funsies in case it ever comes up in court. <laughs> Cast your mind back to the windows in Mr. and Mrs. Gerdeb's room. Alright, I'll try. So the window opens in order to allow air to circulate inside the house. Alright. As it's a top hinged casement window, it swings open along the upper edge, you see. Are there really this many names for windows? See you later, Arrow. I'm glad you rectified your ignorance. A casement window's most prominent feature is the stay! A metal bar which prevents the window from being opened beyond a certain amount. It prevents it from opening? This is all news to me! Absolutely correct, sir. In other words, if a book or a knife had been thrown through the open window, it would have clattered against the pane and fallen straight down the pavement below. No! You see the problem then? Good, your education in Windows is complete! Now it's time to learn Linux! Or the Mac OS! <laughs> Good one. Thank you. I thought you'd appreciate that one. <laughs> there was never any possibility of either the book or the knife traveling 15 yards over the road. That is, unless the window pane had been shattered, something we've discounted already. Uh, it can't be! 
Do you see that, Wally? That young Japanese man just collapsed in agony. Oh, yes, my darling. I saw it. I saw how he crumbled before me. Oh, Wally, you're so strong. <laughs> You're so strong, Rolly. Look how you said words and kicked this poor Japanese man's ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, this is funny. How is this happening? I haven't even started the cross examination yet, and I already, and already my argument's been destroyed. Control, if you could drag yourself up right again, the court awaits your cross-examination. My lord. Oh good, another desperate situation. <laughs> this is so funny. I'm sorry. It's li her pupils are fucking stars, and it's amazing. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. The world's most awoo couple. Seriously? Yeah. It's kind of... It's kind of like like uh, the Genshin Impact, which has like pupils of different stars. It's stuff like... Uh, Hu Tao's is like a flower or something, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, and like this dude's just like sleep bubbles are his stars, and are his pupils, and her pupils are just stars. She's so starstruck with cops. Um, <laughs> her man, Steph. With her man, specifically her man as a cop. Because she could not even say she doesn't know what he looks like outside of a cop's uniform. Just saying. How can you say that for certain? A very good question, sir. And the answer is this. It has the noble founding principles of the force written on it as a reminder to all us policemen of our sworn duty. He showed us that before, didn't he? Did he? I can't say I remember. I was actually about to say, like, I'm pretty sure we saw it before and heard the same exact spiel before. Welcome back in, Iro. By the way, Iro, how is my horrible English accent? I do have to ask. To patrol the streets of London town and uphold the peace of the common man. It is what the job is about. And that is why I can stand here today beside my long-suffering wife and tell you a Bobby's good for his word. While rubbing my tired eyes, admittedly. Sa. Oh, Rolly, you're so manly. <laughs> what English accent? Damn, okay, I, I guess I'm doing a really bad job of it. How do I get more English? Don't, don't save it for the next one. You have so many more people to voice. That is true, that is true. I'm gonna have to, like... I mean, Sherlock's voice is pretty English, I hope. I hope. <laughs> Of course I am, my darling Patricia. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. Be more snobbish and annoyed. Oh, this guy's definitely not snobbish or annoyed. He's too tired to be any of you two. No, no, this is what I meant. I meant, how can you say for certain that this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garrett? Ah, I see. You should have said so earlier, sir. Yes, well, you could. So could you answer the question? That was a waste of time, then. Absolutely, sir. I will answer to the fullest of my ability, sir. There's a surprising reason why Mr. and Mrs. Garadab's domestic dispute can't be related to this case. But before- Oh my god! But before I get into that, sir, just one thing. I need to take a nap. Yes? I'd very much like you and all your countrymen to understand that the great British institution of the Scotland Yard. So I hope you'll take back some tales of us London bobbies and how we uphold our guiding principles. I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only just arrived here. So to that end, sir, I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for your perusal. But I must warn you, you won't get, you'll be able to get through it without shedding a few tears. Thank you. I'll try.
Okay, well, we're gonna take a look at that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> or is it the beard going to his mouth? No, dude, that 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 that's the that's the thing on on his bobby helmet. That's the strap on his bobby helmet. That's like the uh, the, the head strap. It's the bob. What's the bobby helmet called? I don't know. The bobby helmet. I don't know. <laughs> All right, principles of policing. Oh my god, it's only two pages long. To wonder why police suck sometimes. <laughs> Item one, the police will strive to preserve the peace within his allotted beat. Okay, does he not have a chin? I don't think he has a chin, no. Uh, a patrolling officer is expected to walk 20 miles around his beat for a day for the furtherance of community relations. Any crime following the jurisdiction of the beat in which they are discovered. When the crime is discovered on the beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigation and help detectives. That doesn't help with anything, does it? Maybe not right now, but maybe later. Does he have a chin? A subtle chin. Yeah, he's got a subtle chin. It's a subtle chin. <clears throat> By what you mean they don't fully open, is that correct? Yes, sir. They're really just there to allow a bit of air through the house, you see. So they're restricted as to how much they open. And therefore, anything thrown out of the window from inside the room will simply strike the pane and fall onto the street directly be below. For clarity, allow me to remark the map. <laughs> Here is a location where objects would have fallen. Hmm, yes. The regular opposite of the street of the crime, on the other side of the rather wide world. It was so hard for someone to mention this top hinged case of thing before. Well, I have another question for you, Constable. And what would that be, sir? How do you even know? Why would you have any idea what sort of windows Mr. and Mrs. Gerdeb's house is furnished with? Ah, well, sir, that's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigation yesterday. Oh, she about to be like, oh no, he was with me all day yesterday, it was our day off, I was kissing him, I was smooching him, I couldn't, you know, I, 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 I gave him hugs, and we made this nice knitted, knitted, uh, 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 scarf, and I've been with him the entire time, because it literally connects us both from, like, entirety, so, like, that he's not done anything. Well, let's see what she says. Excuse me. Do you have something to add, Mrs. Beat? <laughs> Sorry. You look, well, delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? Oh, I was just remembering, that's all. We really were so lucky. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, of course I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we were just so lucky it didn't happen on Volley's beat. It was so close, you see. Oh, I hadn't realized. Oh yes, that street by abode. That's the boundary between Raleigh's Beat and the next one. Isn't that right, my love? Constable Beat! Hmm? Huh? Ah, ah, yes, that's right. That's the reason why I was helping out the, with interviewing the occupants of the Gerdeb household yesterday. Their house is on my beat, you see, sir. What? She just said it wasn't on the beat. No, she said, remember, the Gerdeb's house is on the beat, but the body was found on the other side ah, of the road, not gotcha. his beat. Hmm. That's really cutting it close, then. Constable, I wonder if you could clarify something. If the Gerdeb household is on your beat, does that mean that the pavement next to it is as well? Outside Mr. Gerdeb's house? Yes, ma'am! The pavement on the out- on the- on that side of the road is part of my beat. I see. Well, I was unaware of that. 
I just think if the woman had been attacked just on the other side of Bayer Road, we would have never been able to go for that meal to celebrate our wedding anniversary. But that's the life of a bobby, after all. Extraordinary people are bobbers. Paris is working for the benefit of all Londoners. Do you know what I think? I think it was the good lord's way of rewarding my Rolly for all his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? That must be it, Pat! My love! That must be it! I think perhaps we should make sure we have the information officially on record. Leave it to me, Mr. Narihodo. I'll take care of it immediately. I didn't say anything! Okay, <laughs> spells information. Then I'll put it in the court record. Um, pavement where the victim was found lies just outside of Constable, Be Constable Beat's Beat. The border which runs down the middle of Briar Road. And now it's my turn, I think. Um, press that. But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already and it was dark. <clears throat> oh, but Polly and I were strolling along, gazing at the night sky and looking for a lucky star. They're disgustingly sweet. God. <laughs> I don't think I could have molasses this sweet. I legitimately do not think I could put my mouth up to a maple syrup tree, suck out the maple syrup directly, and it would not be this sweet. That is literally <laughs> true as well, because it doesn't taste the same coming out of the tree itself. But you get my point, right? <laughs> <laughs> I could literally suck on sugar cane, and it wouldn't be this sweet as these two. <laughs> Sorry. The star that will guide us to eternal happiness. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> These two, I swear to God. Can't, can I to answer the question? <laughs> if a flaming book had... If a flaming book had crossed... Across the sky in front of us, it would have lit up like a shooting star. And if I'd seen a shooting star, I would have made a wish upon it. Let Wally be an inspector, I would have said. At three times, at least. Of course. Off the smog and everything, we couldn't actually see any stars. In short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife crossed the sky before you? Why did I say sky? Cross the sky before you. Yes, sir. That's correct, sir. As sure as the night sky in London is starless, sir. Hmm. Turns seems like they're telling the truth. And then we saw the poor woman fall to the ground, so we ran straight over to help her. Oh. A trusty Raleigh who was sleeping. <laughs> Yes, you said that you went to a nearby police box to fetch another officer, is that right? Yes, that's right, yes. If I had been on Rolly's beat, I would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. You can't be expected to know the location of every police box on the beat. Rolly told me the way, only I sort of got a little lost on the way. Aww. Patricia, my darling, that's why I love you. Your terrible sense of truth. <laughs> All right, try that again. <laughs> the way he looks at her so earnestly. Like, look at his eyes. His eyes are so shiny. <laughs> oh my God. Patricia, my darling, that's why I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to me. Oh, Pat! Oh, Rolly. Oh, please. So, I suppose I was gone for about 15 minutes. But 
like I said, my Broly was at the scene the whole time, making sure nothing was disturbed. I was off duty the time, of course, but a true Bobby is never really off duty, sir. <clears throat> Hold on, I actually, I'm actually gonna text something. I'm gonna, okay, I cannot text Elijah. This Elijah is offline. I was asking, they still call. You know, what, is Bliss online? Hold on. Uh, Bliss, 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 Bliss. No, okay. <laughs> I was gonna ask if they still call. All right, anyways. Nothing strange to report. Sir. Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. I had my eyes wide open the entire time. Never looked away for a second. No one else approached the scene, and nothing was removed from it. I can swear that on the yards on a sir. <clears throat> really, that seems a little strange. Beg your pardon, sir. Strange, sir. Seems altogether regular to me. The bird copy of the Lion's Pride was originally in the Garadep's household. The question remains, how did it find its way into the hands of the victim? Can you shed any light on that, seeing as you were at the scene of the crime the entire time? Ah! Could it be a different copy, sir? One that just happened to be burnt as well. Wow, it's a small fucking world. Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping the book like that in her hand? As we can see from the photograph of print, she has a bag over her shoulder. Well, sir, the book was in the lady's hand from the moment we arrived at the scene. Is that so? There's something about the statement that's not sitting right with me. The two mysteries of how the knife ended up in her back and how the book ended up in her hand. There must be some common thread between them. Um, can I ask you something? Please, Mr. Lawyer, sir. I'm gonna love this, and she's gonna dig herself in a deeper hole, and this is gonna be exactly what I need. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. What is it? You're- you're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell. What? I- I wasn't- I mean, I mean, what was she doing? Please, just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. You might just seem like the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my word, I am. I really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses, I don't want to hear it. My voice will be heard. My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? First, we're going to allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire. Sometimes the path of least resistance is this sage one. That was a very loud mutter. I heard that. <laughs> that Japanese man thinks he's a policeman's wife's word counts for nothing, does he? Never said that. But watch out, sir. I might let you get away with something like that, but my volley won't. <laughs> does he do the me me or does he do the honk or does he do the which one do you think he does uh the me 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 yeah that's what i was going to honestly duly noted miss me please i humbly ask you to continue What could she possibly be about to say, I wonder? And we placed the knife in her back! <laughs> I know what I saw. My eyes d never let me down. My sense of direction is a little off sometimes, though. Okay, so you said something right here. Okay. Miss B, nobody is questioning what you told us. <laughs> I saw it, I did. That evening, I saw it clearly. That little eastern man with the whiskers and the funny curved back, slinking away from the scene. Literally, this, when she said funny curved back, I'm like, I should probably fix my posture. <laughs> I'm like, I feel judged. Huh. I know what I didn't see as well. 
I didn't see any flaming books and knives flying through the sky. Oh, very clear. What? Oh, this looks like a voicemail. So you just... I, I, I literally was the the Steel Samurai songs I played my I started playing on my phone, which means, um, you know, it's uh, I got phone calls. So I'm like, oh wow, da 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 da. da. <laughs> uh, you also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction. Oh yes, well that's a little embarrassing, really. Is it? I'm always ending up at the wrong place when I've made arrangements to meet Rolly. He gets ever so cross. Did you just say that was like the most bewitching thing about her, Rolly? Didn't you? Excuse me. Alright, I'm just looking up something real quick. A really weird phone number that called me, actually. Uh, give me one second, guys. I'm gonna put myself on mute. I'll be right back. I'll put you on mute as well, Katie, all right? Okay.
And we're back. All right, guys. So I have some unfortunate news. I do have to deal with some stuff personally um, at the moment. So we are going to save. We are going to um, just kind of end the stream here, unfortunately. Wordsmith Pico, thank you very much for the raid. Unfortunately, though, I do have some things that I need to get to right now um, that are important. So uh, thank you guys very much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had a fantastic time. I do not have time to raid anyone. But uh, y'all stay safe and stay bonded. It's cool. I'll see you for the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.